All right, so welcome back. This is episode eight. I'm Dan. And I'm Scott. And today we're going to be talking about lighting and kind of what kind of lights um, photographers use and videographers use. Yeah, it's a, it's a good topic. It's it's one of those things that I'm not that knowledgeable on. You know a little bit more about it because you've done some more like controlled environment stuff. And I'm more yeah. like uh, pictures of my kids or landscapes or whatever it is, architecture. Yeah, so even in the beginning when I got into photography and videography, lighting wasn't really a big deal. I would just go out and shoot and right. whatever I got, I got. But once I started learning more about it and lighting really is everything. Oh, it's um, huge. It's you know? huge. Before we get yeah, so. too thrown into the subject, let's remind everybody. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, thank you for listening to the prior episodes. If you did so, uh, we f- again please follow us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, still available Spotify, Google Podcast, uh, your typical ones. We're still working on Apple. I actually did send an <laughs> email inquiry to see what the deal was, but no response. So I'm sure COVID nineteen <laughs> has something to do with that, but it is what it is. Um, um, the other thing is, uh, let's try to get people engaged. Uh, so if you do listen to them, you know, please comment on whatever platform you're listening to. So if it's Facebook, leave a comment, even if it's like, "Hey, what's up?" Like, I love what's going on. Or if you want to like throw your opinion on the topic, uh, that would be that would be great. So, yeah. So, so yeah, let's kind of dive into, uh, into lighting a little bit. Um, in, in what I know, I'm definitely not, you know, crazy knowledgeable about it because there's so many, you know, when you do video, you focus on video, but then there's people that just do lighting and then there's people that just do audio. So, you know, it's a lot to learn. Yeah. Um, especially like, you know, think about like in a movie set or like if you're in some sort of professional photo shoot, like there's they hire them that just to do that, just to do lighting. And it's, yeah. it's, it's overwhelming for sure. Um, yeah. why don't we start with, I know one of my, like you've done some, again, commercials for people. What do you typically bring to like a video shoot, uh, that you would do? Like what's, what are some of your go-to products or, or yeah, just elaborate on it. Yeah. So, um, what I call them, they're video lights, um, constant, constant lights. I use, I usually bring two big ones. Um, usually a big key light, which is hitting me right here. And then you'd bring either a fill light or a light you can hit from behind. So it kind of separates them from the background. Okay. So when you talk about a key light, you're talking about like your main light source. That's your main light. Yes. So that's yeah, not a that's, product. That would be that's your just light. like your main light source. So that could technically be the sun. Right, your key light could right. be so, the sun. Absolutely. So you can put yourself in front of a window. Um, yeah, any any sort of overpowering light source that would be different from something. You know, cool. Another. You don't want everything lit. I mean, some people do, but it's very even. There's no contrast in your face. There's no shadows. Um, but usually for women, that's really good because it kind of takes out the wrinkles and stuff, and you don't really get the you know more manly or I guess right. it kind of it's also not as harsh. Depends maybe. on whatever it's, scene. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, so we got a key light and then you called it something else, a fill light, right? So that fills in yep. like half so of your fill face. light will either, yeah, it'll bounce, it'll bounce. You can use a bounce fill or whatever, but it will, um, bring some, some light back into your face to take away if it's too shadowy. So, so some it fills things, a little bit more light in. Sure. So one of the things I've looked into and I, I don't own because I don't do a ton of portraits, but is the, you, I've seen those like round discs and they've got like yep. white ones and silver ones Reflectors. and gold and black yep. and the whole nine yards. So they, they usually come in fives now. So it's like silver and gold on one side, you unzip it and then it's like a diffusion on the other side or yeah. So a let's of go things. through like what each one would do. So a white <laughs> one, it's, it's unbelievable what color, like if you have a light source and, or even the sun, if you take one of those white discs, oh, yeah. right, and put it down below the shot, just by using the sun, yeah. it will literally bounce all that light up into your face. Yeah. It's, they're amazing. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Uh, silver will give you more of like a, a cooler look. Obviously the gold, like reflective will give you Gives more you a of nice a warmer warm look. look. And then the yeah. black, the black actually will absorb most of the light, right? So Yes. A lot of people yep. will use that and they can put it over them and it will actually create some harshness or some shadows um, over them. Or you can use it like for this instance, you're, you gave me a light that we're, I'm using as my key light and yep. I, it's, it was too bright and you were like, put something, put something in front of it. So I'm actually using wax paper, right? So like yep. household item. Nice DIY. Just, yeah. Yep. Just, yeah. Just to diffuse it. So, uh, it's, so that's another, 
those big those big bounce fills usually have a diffuser in it. Like a, I have a huge one, um, and that's what you put if it, if the sunlight's too hard in front of somebody, you'll put that out of frame, and it will make the light softer and and more beautiful beautiful look. So do you use a stand, or does somebody <clears throat> hold that, or you, like? Uh, yeah, you you can do both. You can use a okay. stand if they're moving. Someone can hold it and walk with them. There's so many yeah. different, yeah, different ways. All right. So you talked about, we, we, I asked you the question, uh, you go to a shoot, you bring your, your key light, a fill light. Um, what? And then, I mean, and then usually, yeah. So I'll bring those two lights and then usually I'll look around to see if there's like, um, you know, a light that they have that you can turn on kind of how you have your desk lamp on. Yep. You look around, I look around and see if I can turn something on, which just brings more to the shot. Yeah. It just creates some, like some interesting background or some sort of yeah uh yeah eye draw for whatever whatever it is we're looking at yeah so if you look um i don't know this is not for our audio people <laughs> you, it doesn't help but over here i've got my yeah. my just my desk lamp up there and if you notice on my shot too and this is something that you know is new to my arsenal is this this L rgb light and you can kind of see that blue light that's coming up and filling and then filling the background here um it just adds an interesting depth to your light and creates some distance between me and the background um yeah lighting's huge so that's another thing yeah that's another thing that a lot of youtubers do is they have the orange and teal look and that's you know complementary colors so it looks good to the eye right um so so a lot of people have have that look on their yeah, videos the cool thing about orange and teal is like so you know most people's skins are some sort of orange brown tan color so when you add that light blue or that tealy color it really when you go to color grade and and you know, make every, make the shot look nice. It really will elevate your look for, for short money. I mean, to do something like that. I mean, you don't even right. have to have the actual, like an RGB light to do so you can still color, color grade with those colors. So it'll make m normal blues look a little bit more teal and more, you know, tans and stuff look a little bit more orange. So that's, that's also, that's a little bit more in depth. We'll get into color grading, uh, at, in a later episode, but I'm using a blue light to create that same effect essentially. Yep. And, and the other good thing too, is it, it's separating you from the background. So there's a light hitting you and kind of outlining you a little bit. Right. So we know that you're not just, you know, absorbed into the background. So right. it looks, so it's, it, it's really good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the little things and you, mm -hmm. you know that more than anybody else, I think, or, or more than me actually, that video yeah. lighting makes such a big difference. Um, yeah. You move the smallest thing and it makes a huge, huge right. difference. Yeah. So from a photography <clears throat> perspective, um, it, it also makes a big difference, especially like just having one flash at a, at 45 degree angle to somebody. So you and I shot, yeah. um, our cover photo for Facebook and, and social and YouTube and stuff like that. We also took some headshots, but just by having your, your big flash there with your, what's that called that goes over it? It's the, uh. So, yeah, it's like a softbox. Yeah, softbox. So putting yep, your softbox yep. over it, one, you're not getting like really harsh light. You're getting a, but it's also that instant flash. And down, uh, later in the episode, we'll talk about, um, we, you talked about constant video light versus yeah. flash. And we'll so, talk so about So flash and strobes. Yeah. We'll, yeah. So yeah. I kind of have a list of like all the lighting things that, you know, people use. Yep. Um, but do you remember Michael Winters in school? No, he he was so. he I forget what kind of teacher he was, but he does a lot of photography on the side, and okay. his flash photography he does a lot of studio work. Yep, is unbelievable. And right. I hit him up, and I was gonna like have him teach me, but then I started getting into video, so I kind of fell off. Sure. But it all really is the same, like where you direct the light, how you angle it. Yeah, maybe he, um, that's a good person. It's all to have, the same uh, on the podcast as a guest. Oh yeah, he just um, he, I actually have his uh, his photo book. Perfect. Bought his photo book and it's really good. Yeah. yeah. So that's somebody that we could have, you know, really dive into, you know, the, the little, th the nuances of lighting more than us just like shooting the shit about it. Um, right. Yeah. So from, for video purposes, you've got, uh, we've talked about kill or your, your, what you call it? The main light. Yeah. Key light with key a light, soft box sorry, or something. Say kill light. Yep. That's not right. Uh, <laughs> So you've got your your key light, you've got your fill light, you've got some sort of accent light separates you from the background. You know, the other thing is those all all those lights can't be in the shot. I guess your right. accent light could be like you've got I've got my desk lamp on, but it's yeah. it's also positioning them. So before we got on, you talked about a, a term you call did you call it Rembrandt lighting? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's where So that's where it, yeah. Go ahead and explain it's, it. It was made up. Yeah, well it's it's 
easy to explain, well, not easy to explain, but it was made up in this guy, I forget his name, but uh, yeah, I forget his name, but um, he was a painter and he would paint with a little triangle under the eye and they called it Rembrandt lighting. Um, like so in, they brought it, I mean, yeah, like it's in, all about lighting. So when you light from above shooting down, you get that you know, shadow. the shadows on my face. Yeah. So it's a little more contrasting right, contrast. here. It creates like an interesting shot. So my yeah. my light you can see on my camera is a little bit more even. Like I do have some darkness, but um, it's a little bit more even. Whereas Dan's got a little bit more of a harsher light, and it's just a preference thing. It's not that one's better than the other. It's just some people prefer a particular lighting, or maybe like a shoot, you know, has a, a, or a customer has a particular look that they're going for. Um, you know, if it's if it's you've done some shoots for like hair salons and stuff like that. Typically, they're going to want something that's got more of an even light, right? Yeah, whereas, so, yep, yep. whereas if you're going and you're doing a shoot for like a portrait for somebody that's like a magician or something, they're going to want <laughs> they're going to want something that's like you know a darker, yeah, more a little bit more dramatic, look, right? So yes, yeah, more absolutely. dramatic. That's a great term. So um, yeah, yeah, that's that's you know, lighting can really make or break. If I kick my camera out and just take a boring shot, um, even though it's an expensive camera, it does. That's not what makes it a nice looking shot. It's the lighting, right? Yeah. So it, with photography, um, you have flashes, right? Um, you have the strobes and then on camera flashes, you know, external flashes. And most people are um, so, familiar with like, a, cause like their iPhones have flashes on them. Right. So right. Like most, and even people that have had like, you know, little point and shoot cameras, they have pop-up flashes. The one thing I hate mm -hmm. about it is, and we, we talked about this, I think in episode two is how terrible they are. Like they just, they're right. harsh. They're like super flash. There's no control over them. So elaborate. And that's exactly why. Yeah. So it's, it's super harsh because it's directed right at you. You're just getting hit with a, with a beam of light. Um, there's no diffusion. And for the most part you're up close and it's just, it's looks terrible. Um, so what people, what you want to do essentially is, you know, if you have an external flash, um, but you want to bounce it off something or put a diffuser over it so it so you're not just getting the full blast you're getting a nice soft look you, you said bounce it what you could use those big discs those diffusers we talked you about, can use the discs you can bounce it off the ceiling right, if, which, if there's a white ceiling. i think it's so cool you can bounce it off the ceiling yeah. so if you have a light instead of shooting it right at your like to bounce it off the ceiling and have the light come down and even like that's cool man that's just exactly like, it's a much softer look right yeah. and, it'll and, and one thing that i look. didn't yeah yeah one thing that I didn't realize either is um, I use my flash outside all the time now uh, for photography. When I'm doing shoots, it's like, you know, I'll be in, usually I like, you know, a nice cloudy day, but I'll still bring my flash out because lighting the person a little bit brighter than the background or even their face is just makes it pop. So it's when amazing. You, when you talked about a nice cloudy day, most people, this is kind of counterintuitive because most people would think you'd want a sunny day, but what happens in a sunny day is right. you're getting really harsh light. So we're going to talk about this at the end because this is more my, like sunlighting is more my niche than it is Dan's. Um, yeah. Well, I guess when you do, you know, wildlife, you, you also get that, but. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll explain it. Yeah. yeah. So um, when the sun's high at like noon and it's, it's got harsh shadows and I keep putting my hand up here kind of to show like shadows like this, when you have a harsh shadow like that, it it's not flattering whatsoever. And it actually, it actually can make a photo look terrible like it could be the absolute worst you could take a photo at noontime and take or or take a photo with overcast the same photo and it will look yeah drastically different and so, now let me i want to tell you a quick story um i was doing real estate photography and with my drone and someone was like oh you know they, they can only do it at you know it was like two o'clock in the afternoon and i'm like oh my god it's gonna be worst. terrible i go i shoot it and it was, the photos were terrible, super sunny shadows everywhere. And so I snuck back at, um, at sunset yep. and shot a bunch more photos. And then I showed them, I was like, this, this is, is the, the difference, difference between what it could have looked like, which was shit. Right. And then, you know, an actual decent photo. Right. So lighting is huge. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it makes such a difference. So, uh, we'll get into the, the, uh, photo aspect of it but you talk about all right so gray cloudy day you're also using your external flash now are you you're not yep. using that on camera or are you setting that to the side no, like so, how do you use that yes so i use a strobe it's a bigger flash um mine's battery powered so and but you you have to have a connector i have it over there but 
you still have to have a, a receiver and a transmitter. So the receiver on your camera right. so, to, to tell the flash to go off perfect. when it goes off. So what happens is yep. when you push the shutter down, right, because it's a strobe light, it's not like most people think a strobe. They think of like police siren or when they've, you know, gone to the club or whatever and they've got strobes. It's it's the same <laughs> Same idea, except for the camera's shutter button, which is what you, the button you hit to take a picture, tells the flash to go off seconds before you take that picture. So it gives you that burst of light that you wouldn't have gotten if you were using like a solid panel. So the other thing is I'd ask, why don't you use solid panels for like photography versus a strobe? Like what's the, like I, I you, have an you, idea. You what can the message- use, you mean, you mean constant like, like a video light, right? Like, wh- why do people use a strobe yeah. versus a video light? Like, what's the di- like? Um, well, one is it's it's a little more accessible. Um, one, they're cheaper to so, buy so a video, bunch of flashes strobe, than a strobe. Strobes are cheaper than solid video lights. Uh, yeah, so you have your flash, you, your on camera flashes, and then your strobe lights. Your bigger strobe lights are a little bit more expensive, but usually they're all battery powered, right? Um, because you're going to be going out in the field with them, so right. it's a video light. Is You're going to need to plug it powered. in somewhere. Some of them have batteries now, but usually, yeah, you'll plug it okay. in. So it's an efficiency thing. So. so strobes can run off battery and they're only they're only sending that burst of light when you need it. So they run a little bit more yeah. efficiently and they're more compact traditionally. Um, so you can yeah. place a bunch yeah. of them around to get, you know, that desired look. Um, and you can get flashes, yeah. uh, strobe flashes and video flashes, but starting at like 50 bucks, you know, for real basic. You get them very cheap now. And yeah. go up to, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars for like the smaller ones. And then like you talked about having strobe lights that are professional, like with your softbox over it and everything like that. So exactly. You can add a huge softbox to it um, with a with a regular on camera flash or the ones you buy, the external on camera on camera flash ones or whatever. Um, usually just have a little teeny diffuser or you can buy, I have like the Gary Fong light diffuser. You can buy like a little dome for it. And again, we're but just, the bigger the soft yep. box, the, the more flattering, you know, more, the softer the light will be sure. on, on someone. And and when yeah. you say, when we say soft box, again, we're just diffusing the light. We're just evening it out. So that it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure you, everybody's like, it'd be like at night, if you took a flash light, flash light and it's like got this beam of light, right. Versus like a floodlight, which is like, you know, a lot wider. Essentially, that's yep. what we're trying to accomplish with the diffuser. It's kind of what a lampshade does, actually. It's exactly what a lampshade a- does. Absolutely. The, you could put a small light, the bigger, you know, if you put a sheet in front of it, right. it's going to cover the, fill the whole sheet, and then you're going to get a beautiful, you know, soft light. Yeah. It's, soft it's, image. It's yeah. just like your soft living light. room uh, shade on your lamp. It's, mm-hmm. you know, the shade actually is what glows. <clears throat> the light itself, if it wasn't on there, it would just essentially you know, quickly dissipate or be really bright in a particular spot. Um, so it's, yeah. it's the same concept uh, as far as a solid light goes and then even a flash when it yeah. goes off. Yeah. So, so the other thing, not to get like too crazy technical cause these, it gets confusing, but um, usually the sync speed for a camera is two fiftieth of a second. So you can't, they have high speed sync ones, so you can go above that, but normally it's just, Remember how in one episode we were talking about DSLRs with the mirror going up and down? Yep. Um, the flash of light can only go so fast. Right. If you have too fast of a shutter, it's going to miss part of that light and it's going to, you know, half your image will be black, half your image will be in, you know, with yeah, the light in it. Exactly. So, so it's very confusing, that, but a lot of that has to do with the, the quality of the flash too and how much it can output. So the higher quality ones yeah. can be more precise and when that flash goes off. So that you can catch the light at a higher. So what Dan's talking about is shutter speed. So um, the the simple way to to like dissect what that is. So uh, it's really how long the image is getting projected onto your sensor. So it's done in in fractions of a second. So traditionally, uh, handheld you wouldn't go below like one thirtieth of a second if you've got in, in body stabilization. Ooh, yes. I know. That's oh, low. well, now with embodied, with, yeah, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. I, with IBIS, you can do that. <laughs> like I can do that on my Sony and it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but if you, but, but then you still, you're going to get some blurriness out of probably the image or the person maybe that, that you're shooting because, you know, people move so quickly that, you know, the hand's not going to be perfectly sharp. Whereas if yeah. you have the sensor take a picture within like one three hundredths of a second or one two hundredths of a second, it's going to freeze that person. So when Dan says, you know, most of those, uh, lights can't go above one two fiftieth of a second. That's still really fast. I mean, our cameras can right, shoot yeah. probably what's the what's the highest yours can shoot probably one four hundredths or one five hundredths of a second. 
Oh, wait, two, Even, one, two yeah, thousand, or one four second. thousandth yeah. of a second. Oh, I don't, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think I, I mean, very rarely do people shoot that high. I definitely don't. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe when it's really, really bright out, uh, but a lot of times I use a filter or like a polarizer or something, which will, it's like sunglasses for the front of your lens. So it, it allows me to show my sh- slow my shutter speed down a little bit, but um, yeah. So yeah, that's a good, that's another point. Unless you're using a constant light, right? You're using a video light, then, then you could go higher. So that would be right. Another. Yeah, you can, at that point you can do whatever you want. You just have to either turn because when you when you change your uh, shutter speed, you know the light will either get lower or or higher. So right, it'll um, be, you'd it'll either be have to turn your lights or up or turn dimmer. them down. Yeah, right. yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, so that's the two like external lights that you know photographers and videographers have control over. Let's talk about the sun and the moon and the stars um, as light. yes. Yeah. So this is, yeah, even, yeah, even the moon too is a great one, but you know, the main, uh, this is what people will probably hear the most is golden hour. Yeah. And that's probably the best time to go shoot is right before sunrise or right before sunset. And when Dan was telling a story er earlier about him using a video or his drone and taking a shot, his shadows were super harsh because he took it at two o'clock. So the sun was at its high point. So the shadows were coming down over his subject. Whereas if you get, if, if, you go at sunset or like an hour before sunset, you get this like, like golden glow and the shadows are actually almost non-existent because it's almost right. level with you. So they're projected so far out that, that they don't show up in your photo. It's a more even light. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's when I go out for wildlife stuff, um, I'll go and shoot. And then when the sun gets high, I'll either go home or I'll, you know, sit there and wait until, it, it gets i'll wait eight hours you know it starts getting dark is, again yeah. <laughs> which you it would sucks do. but yeah, yeah. but and, and you know animals also this is off off subject but you know they'll rest in the afternoon sure and then they'll come back yeah, they're out more active and, and, in the morning and i mean that's it, all animals are more yeah. active in the morning at night yeah. um yeah so and it's the same for landscape right so like i'm sure it's it just gives you a more even look i mean not that you can't use that to your advantage you know especially when you're shooting buildings or stuff you know sometimes it's really cool to have a dark shadow on one half of the building or mm-hmm. to emphasize a particular product but traditionally people like to shoot anywhere from like four o'clock to you know sunset or five o'clock a couple hours before um sunset to get that golden hour and that's a great time also and anytime i've had pictures taken of my family or me or i do a photo shoot for somebody the photographer always wants to go at that time of day like they always want to go at four or five yes. six o'clock or early in the morning you know eight o'clock because you're getting that golden hour you know that nice goldish look um yeah so i mean if 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 you guys go out in harsh sunlight or at noon or at three um find a shady spot Find, you know, under a tree or somewhere where your face isn't going to be, you're not going to get those harsh shadows. Right. Um, and if you, and if there is, isn't something like that, grab a big diffuser right. and just put it right over, you know, out of frame. But so it's, you know, you'll get a nice even look on someone's face. And that will mimic a cloudy day. Essentially what you're doing there is right. you're, you're mimicking yeah. a cloudy day to get that even light. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great tip for sure. It's like find a shady area and, and take advantage of something like that. I uh I think it's it's one of those things that you take for granted when you actually get out and shoot. So with both of us having kids, like sometimes it's hard to get out and shoot. You just go and shoot when you can. But when you can time right, it right yeah. to make that happen, it it may, honestly can make an image your favorite image, or if you shoot at golden hour, or your worst image because you shot it at high noon and and the sun's above. Yeah. You. Um, the next definitely if you it I, it took me a minute to learn that and and now you know I've done photo shoots in direct sunlight and I'm, and I'm like you know you can, there's only so much you can do in Photoshop and Lightroom right um, so you know but then I learned you know bring a diffuser or if I don't have a diffuser go you know into a shady area and you know get a nice nice shot yeah. so and the, we we the other thing cool thing is the moon people don't realize how much how much light mm-hmm. the moon can put out so you know I, one of my f- favorite aspects of of landscape photography is uh night photos so this is a topic for a different day for sure but you have to use a tripod and the whole nine yards but you know the moon can actually put off so much light that you could shoot handheld so you don't need a tripod um the other thing is if you do any astrophotography so i'm sure somebody at some point has seen like a star trail uh, picture or like a Milky Way picture or something like that. If you have the moon in the sky, you actually can't get typically a really great 
you know, Milky Way photo or you can't get a really great star trail photo because the moon just it's it's so bright that it will it just makes it so your sensor can't capture that that type of image. And that's because when your uh, mirror is wide open or whatever it is, it's it's gathering light the whole time it's open. So you could go three seconds, 20 seconds, you know, you hit the button and it takes that long to actually take the image because it's gathering the light to be able to produce a, a, a whatever your exposure exactly. so is it's set like, to. Yeah, and it's it's <clears> tough. <throat> and and you, meant, you, you just said it, like you hit the nail on the head. T- from 20 seconds to 30 seconds is a good general rule for like a night shot, right? So like you'll be able to fully expose something that's maybe not lit correctly. It could be this, and this is why it blows my mind. It could be a completely black night and you could hit the shutter yeah. button on, a, on your camera's on a tripod because you can't move at all because we talked about it shooting, you know, us shooting at 1 20th of a second. Well, if it shoots for 20 seconds, you definitely can't hold the camera perfectly still. Uh, so when that light comes in for 20, all of a sudden it looks like it's daytime in your, in your photo. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, yeah. you and I have done a bunch of nighttime stuff. It's one of my favorite things to do. And, and we can toss a couple photos, um, up on the screen just so some people can get some ideas and we same with the uh kind of golden hour if we've got some golden hour shots just to give some people you know an idea what what the difference between a good shot and a bad shot really is with lighting um yeah for sure just a just a touch yeah, on, lighting's touch on light trails real quick oh yeah we talked we talked about stars putting off lights and stuff or you know lighting the image as well but People don't realize those those light trails we're talking about. In order not to get those two, you can't take a shot longer than twenty five seconds or twenty seconds because you'll actually see those stars start to move in the sky. So it definitely can be tricky when you're trying to get your exposure right at night. Um, it's yeah. it's it's just trial and error is really what it is. Yeah, yeah. It definitely takes practice, and you got to learn what you're doing. You got to learn your camera. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for sure. Cool. I think that's a great episode. I mean, is there anything else you can think of you want to touch on for lighting before we, no, before I mean, we call it? Yeah, I think that was good. I mean, lighting lighting really is everything, and uh, it's very, very important. And, yeah, if you master lighting, you're, you'll be all set. Yeah. It, you don't need a good – you know, you can use any Dude, camera any and you'll camera, get a great, you literally can, you, great image. I, literally. Actually, yeah. a, a perfect example before we go would be like you could use your iPhone on a good lit shot, and it can look – better than a poorly lit shot on a professional camera hands down definitely hands down yeah. so uh yeah lighting's important it's a good episode uh, i hope somebody learned something if you did learn something uh comment below and and let us know like what what in what aspect or maybe if you want to know more about that particular topic for sure that would be uh we can do a little research probably and and become more educated <laughs> on it Other i was gonna say just, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know everything yeah but there's so yeah, there's so much tough, to learn a lot. Uh, definitely not yeah. experts so um Yeah, thanks everyone for listening. Again, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Google Podcast. And uh, thanks for supporting us. Yeah, cool. Until next time, All right, see you guys later. See ya, later.